Hi, I have such a cute, fun project to share with you today. This is a little girl's quilted purse. This is actually, when I started blogging over 15 years ago, I had a blog that I put a tutorial for this on when I made one for my daughter. And that was the first project I ever had on my blog that sort of went, I mean, somewhat viral. I don't know if I've ever truly gone viral, but this little purse was so popular and so fun to make. I got lots of nice comments from people who'd made it. Unfortunately, I used to store my photos on Flickr back then and they lost like most of them. So they disappeared from the blog post. And then for years I would get questions about where those photos were. So all these years later, I thought it was time to remake this tutorial. Not only am I gonna make it a video tutorial, you can also go purchase the printable version of this in my shop, which I will link you to, of course so that you can more conveniently print it out and not have to refer back to the video every time. But this is a very simple project. Even if you don't like to quilt, I promise it only takes like five minutes to do these quilting lines. And it's just so cute and it's worth it. You can of course do this without the quilting lines too, but today we're gonna do it quilted. So before we start, make sure you subscribe, like this video, share it with your sewing friends if you have some. And you're gonna need some cotton fabrics, some quilt batting. You're going to need, let's see, what else? Actually, that's all other than your basic sewing tools. So I'm using today these fabrics. These fat quarters are ones that I got from Annie's Fat Quarter Kit Club that I made a video review of and I love so much. It's so much fun to get cute fat quarters in the mail every month and then you always have something that coordinates with each other. So these are just some of them, there were two others. I already made this little romper and this little dress out of this collection. It's called a bushel and a peck. If it's still out there, I will link you to it. And I'll also put a link to the Annie's Fat Quarter Club because it's so much fun. I've used what I've gotten every single time for more than one project. And it's just so much fun opening the mailbox and seeing that cute package in there. So what you're going to need to do first is to cut your pieces. So your main piece will be, eventually you're going to cut it down to 11 by 18, but right now when you're going to quilt something, it does change shape a little bit as you quilt it. So you want to cut it a little bit bigger. So I cut mine 13 by 20, and then you need to lay it on top of a piece of batting and cut it, just cut the batting roughly around it so it's even bigger. Then you need a lining piece, and the lining piece needs to be 11 by 18. And then you need two strap pieces little handles, two and a quarter by 18. This is a perfectly fat quarter friendly project because no pieces need to be greater than 18 inches and 18 inches is how big a fat quarter comes. So I'm gonna set those aside and let's first quilt our main panel. This will be folded in half to become the purse like this. That's why we only need one of each, one lining piece, one main piece. So to quilt lines, my pins, I like to make diagonal lines. I'm such a straight line quilter. I just find it's faster. <laughs> if you want to try some free motion, that would be really cute too. I like to do a diagonal grid. So for my first line, I will link to this tape. I get questions about it every time I use it. I just mark it with tape and then I put a bunch of pins. You can use quilting pins too, which are more like safety pins, but for small projects, I don't feel like I'm at, as at risk of stabbing myself. So I just use straight ones. So after I sew this first line, which is gonna be right here along the side of my tape, I can remove the tape and then I can just use the seam guide on my sewing machine. I'll show you a picture of that. Yours might have one, it might not. I've also been known to tape a chopstick to the front of my machine to mark where I want my next line to go. So then I just run my current line under that chopstick and then I have perfectly spaced lines. And then I'll go ahead and replace the tape going this way and then make my lines in a grid. So if you have trouble, I'm not using a backing fabric on this, so my machine quilts it fine without a walking foot. But if you're finding that your machine is bunching things up as you go, then attach a walking foot to your machine. It looks like this. Most of them look like this. Some machines have them built in like fast. And then this will help move the layers along together. Also, if you find your machine is eating your batting, then you'll want to layer another um, another cotton piece or a piece of muslin or something lightweight onto the back and that should solve that problem. But my machine handles it fine. I'm just gonna go run it through and sew my quilting lines. Okay, look, I already did one direction. Now I'm going to 
retape it I'm using the same piece of tape in the other direction and go make my lines the other way. I removed my pins as I went, so now I don't need them because I'm all stitched down in most places. Make sure there's no puckering on the back and there's not. You can start and stop sewing off of your fabric and then sew beyond it. And you do not need to back stitch when quilting. I'm all quilted. Adds so much texture, I love it. Also, I realized while I was sewing, I should have mentioned you also need quarter inch elastic. I knew I was forgetting something. So you'll need that too. I like the elastic opening because it prevents things from falling out. Okay, now that we've quilted it, we're going to trim it up to measure 11 by 18, the same as our lining piece. Okay, there's 18 by 11. Next step is to fold this in half, hamburger style, so short end to short end. And we're going to stitch the side seams using a quarter inch seam. Okay, I've stitched my side seams and then I pressed them open. So then we can turn it right side out. And the outside part is done. We're gonna do the handles next. I like to use a chopstick to get my corners out. Okay, so I have my smiling blueberries for my handles. And you are simply going to fold these in half lengthwise and stitch them, the long ends only, not the short ends, in a quarter inch seam this way. Okay, now we need to get these right side out. So I have this handy tool called a fast turn. I'll show you a different way in just a minute because you might not have one of these. But this tool, I've had it for 20 years. It comes with several sizes of tubes. It's a tube turning tool and it is worth every penny. So I will link you to this because it's going to save you so much time. It just pulls it right side out. But if you don't have one of those or a different turning tool, you need to attach a safety pin to your project like this. Stick the head inside and work it. Takes some practice. Takes a second to get started. And you're gonna work it through to the other end, inchworming your way through. So, two ways to turn a tube. One that takes a little more practice and time than the other. Okay, so now that I have those turned out, I'm gonna go press them flat. Okay, I have them pressed nice and flat, but now I'm gonna go top stitch on both long ends, an eighth, and a, an eighth of an inch from either edge. All right, let's attach our handles. We're going to place them two and a half inches in from either side seam. So I'm going to find the two and a half inch mark and I'm going to center my handle over that mark. And pin it. Raw edges matching. Okay, be careful I'm not twisting it. And do the other one. Center it over the two and a half inch mark. And then turn it. I'm going to match this handle to the one on the other side. Now we're going to go baste these in place. I find it easier to just baste around the entire thing than baste four separate pieces. Okay, my handles are attached. Now I have to like to hold it up and make sure they're not twisted, that they're laying as they should. All right, so I'm gonna put that aside for a second and we're gonna put together the lining. So this, we're going to fold hamburger style again, short end to short end. On this side, we're going to sew the entire seam. But on this other side, we're gonna leave some gaps because one is for the elastic casing later. The other is to turn it right side out. So we're gonna leave the bottom three inches open. So I'm going to put a pin here. That's where I'm gonna stop. I mean, I'm going to put a pin Three fourths of an inch from the top and then also an inch and a quarter from the top. So between these two pins I want to leave a hole. So I'm going to stitch here from the top to the blue pin and then from the green pin to the pink pin. This side I'm going to stitch the whole thing. Okay I pressed my seams open but you can see I have a gap at the bottom for turning and I have a small gap here from the three quarters inch mark down to the one and a quarter inch mark that's open also. 
Okay, so now you're gonna take your purse, right side out purse, and put it into the inside out lining, match up the side seams, and pin around it. We're gonna go stitch this all the way around in a quarter inch seam, sandwiching the straps in between. Okay, next step, we are done sewing this seam. We can pull the bag out through this lining hole that we left. Carefully, so you don't rip it. Okay, before we insert the lining into the bag, we're gonna go sew up this hole. Just going to turn it under as if I had sewn it, sort of finger press it and put a pin there. And I'm just gonna go edge stitch this closed. Okay, so now we can put our lining inside of our bag, smooth it out, and then this next step, the pressing step, is very important. I'm going to go press all the way around the little bag at the top. I'm going to put it over my ironing board and press it this way, and then I'm going to press it some more from the inside, making sure that all this gets smoothed out and I don't have any puckers. All right, so it's nice and smooth and flat. And now we're going to sew three rows of top stitching along the top edge. One is just going to be top stitching close to the edge. And then the next two are going to surround our gap that we have right here in our lining. That's gonna form our elastic casing. So one of them is going to be a half an inch away. And the other is going to be one inch away from the top edge. So if you measure that and your gap is either too far down or too high up, just adjust your stitching so that your rows of stitching place your gap perfectly in between them. So we're going to top stitch close to the edge and then I'm gonna sew a half an inch away and then I'm gonna sew one inch away. So when you're doing this, you might be used to taking off the arm of your sewing machine and sliding it over and sewing from the outside. But when you have shifty layers like this, you're less likely to get bunches up in your lining if you sew it from the inside. So my presser foot will be here and I'll just circle it around this way. Okay, so here's my three rows of stitching. You can see my gap is perfectly sandwiched in between the bottom two. So the last step is your elastic. You need to cut 13 inches of quarter inch elastic. My elastic is a tangled mess. Attach a large safety pin to it. Is this too big, do you think? Okay. And work it through from one end to the other. It can be hard to get past this seam over here, but just wiggle it through there. Okay, when I get close over here, I like to stick a pin just in case I accidentally pull it all the way through and have to start over. Okay, there I come through the other end. Pull it out without twisting it. The bigger safety pin you use, the less at risk of twisting you will be. Take it out. Lap the ends. Then you have to pull it out quite a bit so that you can fit this under your sewing machine and stitch these ends together like this, back and forth over this. Okay, you okay there, we're done. Just slide this inside, pull it so it evens out. If you feel like you have to sew this up, you can stitch that up by hand, but I usually just leave it because it doesn't show. And there's our little quilted purse. It's so cute, I have such nostalgic feelings about this pattern. Also, I realized it can fit the Phoebe ragdolls perfectly. You can get this pattern in my shop too, the babies and all the animals. All their clothes have plenty of space to fit in there too. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you make one, please show me. I'd love to see, and I will see y'all again soon. Bye.